Y'all, 2024, 2024 is just a mess so far. And in Atlanta, we just can't seem to catch a break. I just finished talking about some of the characteristics of faithful shepherds and how they think and function and move and the things that are important to them. And, and in contrast to the faithful shepherds who are approved by God, um, what I got to talk about next, all they did was make me say, what in the temple harlotry is happening here? What is going on over at the new birth, y'all? Y'all, I promise you, y'all, 2024, 2024 is just a mess so far. And in Atlanta, we just can't seem to catch a break, okay? Um, if you even remotely pay attention on your timeline, I'm sure you've heard by now that um, Atlanta religious churchianity leader, I got to reorient my language. I cannot call this man a pastor, but the, the Atlanta's religious churchianity leader, Dr. Jamal Bryant. Y'all, he's he's making news again, but for all the wrong reasons, as usual, okay? Um, he isn't being celebrated for his biblical fidelity or how he cares and shepherds the flock of God, but rather, y'all, his name is in everybody's mouth again because like all wolves do, they can only pretend, but for so long, okay? So recently, Jamal Bryant was seen frolicking down in Florida with his co-pastor, Dr. Kari Turner. Um, the two were spotted holding hands, and when they realized that they were spotted by very well-known gossip blogger who goes by the name of Tasha Kay, Ms. Kari pulled the Houdini and disappeared, leaving Jamal to cancel his ice cream order and run for the hills as well. And so, y'all, this is the Stand of the Truth podcast, and I have shared with you guys how I used to be a member of New Birth many, many, many moons ago um, when Bishop Long was the pastor. And I've talked about my experience with churchianity. And so I want to discuss this topic of speaker Jamal Bryant, not because he's a whoremonger, right? Because everybody already knows that, like that's not news, but rather how according to scripture, men like Jamal and his secret side chick, allegedly, Kari Turner, um, these people don't represent Christianity, okay? So we just, I'm making clear distinctions. Like biblically, um, Jamal is not even qualified to be considered a pastor. And how his pastor of cardiology uh, Miss Kari Turner, she's also not a pastor, but rather represents what I would say is a perverted culture that wants to masquerade itself as Christian. But in reality, it's nothing more than just a bad social experiment gone wrong. So, so wh where do I begin with this? Um, first, let's just dis dispel the idea that Miss Kari is a pastor. Um, y'all, when I, when I referred to her a moment ago as, as the pastor of cardiology, I, I was not making that up. Okay. Literally, if, if you go to New Birth's website, um, that's her public title. Uh, she's called the pastor of cardiology. Now, now no one knows what that is because Jamal just makes things up as he goes. He doesn't need the Bible. He, he beats his own drum. Um, but for the record, that is her title, according to the website. And now, according to scripture, you guys have heard me talk about this on more than one occasion. I just finished talking about it, but y'all, a woman cannot biblically function in the office of pastor, elder, bishop, overseer, right? Like, I know, I know the culture is going to push back against that, especially in light of us living in this, this post DEI confused world, along with the segment of rebellious women within the church who just want to wiggle their way outside of God's given role, um, and into the role that's reserved for men only, but I digress. I get it. I, I understand, but the, here's the truth. Um, the truth is that there is no such thing as a female pastor. I know, I know you know some of them. You may carry the title and, and you may even have a, a cute little business card that affirms uh, such a thing. But unfortunately, 
The Bible doesn't recognize your position of leadership and authority within the church of the living God as legitimate. So therefore, neither can I. I can't. I'm sorry. I know that is hard for a lot of people to hear. I know some people are like, oh, I'm tuning out now. She was fine, but now, no. My grandmama passed her. Hey, okay, that's fine. I get it. But I've come to the conclusion, not as a matter of, of personal opinion, but rather because when we examine all of scripture, Not one verse taken out of context, but like just examining the totality of the testimony of scripture, right? Like the Bible affirms a biblical order and a biblical design beginning in creation with Adam, like Adam's formed first and then Eve, right? That that same order, it is echoed and affirmed in the home with the husband being the head of the wife. And then it's something interesting. When Jesus lays the foundation of the church with himself being the chief cornerstone, y'all, he left us instructions in the pastoral epistles by the words of, of Paul to Titus by recording for him and for us to appoint elders in every town as I directed you. That's the testimony of scripture. And then, then right after that, Paul starts talking about the qualifications for the office of pastor, elder, bishop, and overseer. Um, so so Miss Kari, she's not a pastor. And I would even go as far as to say that based on what we have seen, she doesn't strike me as a believer either. Um, because in her Instagram is given like IG model vibes. Well, it, it's really more of an issue. Um, the issue of modesty is like the big elephant in the room. And, um, you know, there's the alleged excessive surgical enhancements. I mean, these these little clues are kind of what leads one to believe that this is this is not a Titus two woman who has the capacity to teach women at new birth to be reverent in behavior and pure. Um, There's a lot that I could say regarding this. But, you know, you guys are adults. And I just I just want to reiterate that. Um, the the point I'm making is that Carby's not a pastor, okay? Now, she may be on church staff at a church or, or an organization that calls itself a church, but a pastor, she is not. Um, now, Jamal, I have covered him in the past, and we, we've probably beat that horse to death concerning why this man is not qualified. But in case you missed it, um, the, the issue with Jamal Bryant, biblically, is the fact that he is not above reproach. And this is indeed the fact. This is the facts, right? The the board at new birth, this is their fault. This is their fault because it's not like everyone didn't already know that Jamal was a horror monger. Like we knew this. New birth installed Jamal as a pastor and they were completely dismissive to the fact that he disqualified himself based on his many, many sinful public actions at his church up in Baltimore. And now, now the city of Atlanta, we have to contend with this stain, if you will, of a man who simply refuses to be held accountable and probably is one of the most dangerous and damaging pastors, in my opinion, of the 21st century based on his known public behavior that people just keep on excusing. Like, like what does the Bible teach concerning the office of pastor, elder, bishop, or overseer, right? Can, can you just go and grab any old body off the street and make them a pastor? Or does the Bible have something to say about the kind of man he must be? You guys, Jamal has several open charges of debauchery, right? Like the term debauchery, it encompasses several aspects of just unholy living, including but not limited to sexual immorality. Like you can throw some drunkenness in there, some crude talk. It's generally just out of control behavior. That's debauchery. Every other month, this man is doing or saying something that is outrageously unbiblical And he points 
to the level of it just this lack of self-control that this man has just not learned. Not only that, Jamal is not above reproach. What does that even mean, right? We hear the term in the scriptures, you know, a man, he must be above reproach, right? Being above reproach, y'all, it's the idea that there is no legitimate accusation that can be levied against you that would bring disrepute on the gospel or the church. Like when you're above reproach, your life should be seen as one that's worth of imitation. Like, yes, that's a, that's a godly man and we should aspire to pattern our lives after him. Then, not just the fact that he's not above reproach, you have the, the issue of arrogance, being greedy for gain, self-controlled, upright, holy, and disciplined. Y'all give me a moment. I need to just address the elders over at Newburgh for a second. Um, y'all, y'all just give me a minute. This, this is just, I know some of them, they might see this and they need to see this. Y'all basically, I just summarized Titus 1, 7, and 8. And I, I just want to know, elders over at the Newburgh, do y'all just skip over this part? Or you know what's in there, but you just don't care because Jamal knows how to raise some offerings and get y'all out of the debt that you're in. I'm just asking. I need to know because this is this is just ridiculous at this point. This is y'all's fault, not y'all the audience. Y'all, the elders of New Birth, this is y'all's fault. You went from bad to worse as if it couldn't even get any worse than the mess you were dealing with after the Eddie Long scandal. Like, really, New Birth? Really? This is what y'all out here doing? Does anybody have any sense over there? Lastly, you got the issue with what Jamal teaches. Y'all, Jamal does not hold fast to the trustworthy word as taught, right? Like that's scripture. This is not an isolated one-off where, oh, he just misspoke or he just kind of misunderstood. No, y'all, he cannot give instruction and in sound doctrine, nor can he rebuke those who contradict it because then he'd have to rebuke himself, right? Like, take a listen. I found, this is a stir-fried foolishness, Meriden. It, it, uh, y'all, just take a listen to this. At the risk of being heretical tonight, might I suggest to you that 85% um, of Jesus' life, he was out of order. Eighty-five percent of his life, he was doing what he was not called to do. God, y'all done got quiet. For 85% of his life, he was not flowing in his God-given function. 85% of his life, he is doing what his natural father wanted. But it did not line up with his divine DNA. For 85% of his life, and he's anointed, He's called, he's chosen, and he's wrong. That's the stir fry foolishness, marinated and dumb that I was talking about. Y'all, this man said, my Lord, my Lord, the second person of the Godhead was out of order. I don't know how you come up with this percentage. 85% of the time. I was like, oh, oh, wow. Yeah, oh. And, 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 and do you know, do y'all know how I know that he knows he's a wolf? Because some false teachers, you'll be like, oh, they're deceived and just being deceived. No, this man knows that he's a wolf. And I'm going to tell you how. Y'all, he prefaced his heresy by saying, at the risk of sounding heretical. And then he just goes on to boldly and arrogantly make his heretical assertion. And all of those people just sat there and didn't say a word, nor did they stand up and walk out, including gospel recording artist and compromised bishop, Mr. Never Would Have Made It himself, Mr. Marvin Sapp. Faithful shepherd. 
Faithful shepherds who are charged with caring for the sheep and shepherding the flock of God, y'all, they don't make hyster uh, heretical statements like that at the risk of sounding heretical. Like, why would you even want that named? Like, faithful pastors don't say stuff like that. They just don't. Y'all, Jesus is God. Jamal, sir, Jesus is God. He was sinless and perfect, both in word, thought, and deed. He came here to do the will of his father. And even if you were planning to try to make this make sense biblically, you blasphemed God and the testimony of scripture simply because in your arrogance, you enjoy, you enjoy pushing the envelope and bringing reproach on the name of Christ. You like this. Yes, y'all. Jamal is a single man and he is free. He's free to go get ice cream with whoever the heck he wants to. But the issue with this whole story, y'all, I'm not even covering all the details. If y'all want to go watch Tasha K, she, whoo, she on a whole nother level. But when an unbelieving pagan spots you in public and you know who she is and you flee like a wicked person just wicked and guilty instead of walking in the light as if everything was on the up and up we wouldn't be having this conversation your conduct among the gentiles is not honorable jamal that's according to first peter second Chapter 2, verse 12. Sir, you're going to have to give an account for all of the foolishness that you have brought to this city. Y'all, this, this man is leading thousands of people astray. Thousands. And I pray, y'all, when I tell you, because I've been, I used to be blinded by the churchianity foolishness that's coming out of new birth. I am praying that some of his members watch this video. And I'm praying, Lord, Father, in the name of Jesus, that they do a work in these people's hearts, just like he did to me. I pray that he confronts, the Lord will confront and arrest the hearts of those people with the truth. And that they need to know that they are following a wolf and they are giving their money to a false teacher who does not care for their soul. Y'all, I pray that his members will see this and run, run away from that building that they keep calling a church. And instead, pick up a Bible, pick up a Bible and seek the Lord for yourself. I'm, I'm merciful to the people who listen to him because y'all, some of Christ's sheep, the elect, they still need the gospel proclaimed to them. And they're still in that organization. We don't know who they are, but I can guarantee you there are some in there that in the fullness of time, the Lord is going to pull them out. The Lord, he will use videos like this, content creators like myself and K-Dub and, and Corey Miner over at Smart Christian Channel and so many other Christian content creators who are sounding the alarm so that those who are supposed to hear the message will hear it and that they will come out from among this foolishness because this is damaging to their souls. Eternity is at stake, you guys. This is... It's salacious, but this is not even funny anymore. This man does not care. He does what he does because he knows nobody's going to hold him accountable. He does not believe the Bible. He does not treat, teach the trustworthy word is taught. He's unqualified, disqualified from leading anybody. Y'all, the gospel, y'all, we got to evangelize the church in my city. We got to evangelize the church. I don't know about where you live, but Atlanta, it ain't looking too good right now. Every week, there is one of these pulpit pimps just proving more and more that they are wolves. They're not even in sheep's clothing no more, y'all. They just all out and just all they wolfery. Just out. The gospel needs to be preached. What is that gospel, y'all? I am, I have no heaven or hell to put anybody in. 
All I know is about the redemptive story of a man who, when I was dead in my sin, when I was sitting over there in new birth, hollering and jumping up and down with a Bible in my hand that I had never picked up to read, having my ears tickled, just made to feel good, being lulled to sleep, dead in my sin. I know that years after that, the Lord pulled me out of there and introduced me to the God of the Bible. And how did that happen? I was shown my sin. I had to come face to the face, face to face with the fact that I was sinful and that I was wicked and that all that time that I spent in church yielded no eternal value because I did not know God. I was hanging on to the every last word of a pulpit pimp who jacked up my credit for seven years, but I was complicit because the Bible was right here. The Lord, the Lord used every single situation that I went through to bring me to my knees and to draw me to himself. I want that for the people at new birth. I recognize that God ain't going to save everybody, but there are individuals who are in that number that God will draw out in the fullness of time. And I'm convinced that it's stuff like this that the Lord uses to be like, all right, I'm pulling you away and you're going to hear some voices. You're going to hear some voices and the gospel's going to be preached and you're going to recognize that you like, I ain't never even heard that message before. Like I'm, I'm a sinner, like a sinner in like what sense? Like I know I sin, but my sin as it relates to a holy God, there's nothing that I can do. I can't this, I, I can't go to church enough. I can't pray enough. I can't do, I can't do anything good. Anything good to warrant his grace. I am praying that the Lord arrest the hearts of people that are still caught up in this fake religious system and that they turn to the God of the Bible. Because y'all, this ain't Christianity. This is why I call it churchianity. This is why I call it churchianity. This is another religion. It's another religion that does not preach the Lord Jesus. They preach in something else, the gospel of me, the self-centered man-made gospel that is a stench in the nostrils of our Lord and Savior.